before we have our guided tour of this 1975 swimming pool plant room, I thought I'd give a quick introduction. This is the plant room of the now demolished Wickham Sports Centre. As we go through, I'll explain each part with some animations I made. This is a simplistic overall diagram of how most of the swimming pool components connect together. We start at the sand filters. I've also spent an unhealthy amount of time lining up pictures of the building before and after it was demolished, working out where everything is from above. So in the corner will be a map representing where we are right now. Okay. So you've got all your tanks, okay. Well, this is for my pool. Water runs through, cleans, cleans all the water, and it's got all sand, all fill sand, yeah? Okay? So, run through. The tension pool tank, so that's an individual tank, yeah? For the tension pool. Is that hotter then? Uh, that's cold, just cold water. I see. Goes into it, yeah? So that's a filter? That's a filter, like filters. There's all your filter tanks, your barrel tanks, yeah? Okay. okay. So that's for the main pool, so obviously that's a lot smaller and that that's needs a lot, a lot smaller, more. So that's all, all of these operate the main pool. Okay. So we've got seven of them. All kept at a certain pressure. Okay. To avoid making this video too long, I've created separate How It Works animations. If you would like to watch them, click the information cards that appear at the top of the screen. This will pause the video and open the animation in a separate tab. So the, so the pressure is on that gauge yeah. at the front there? So you've got pressure there and where they should be and where they should be. Oh, okay. So what are these pipes then? I'll take it there, so that's the outlet yeah, yeah, to them. Yeah, the outlet to supply the steam, it supplies all the steam and everything like that to your saunas and your sauna and steam room, yeah? There are a lot of pumps in this plant room which move water around several water flow and return ring mains. Water that flows on the return line is pumped back into giant hot water vessels for reheating via the boilers. Imagine having to wait five minutes in the shower for the hot water finally to arrive from the plant room hundreds of meters away. With the flow and return water lines, hot water is waiting within meters of the showers and taps so that it is quickly available. As the pumps that operate the flow and return lines are running most of the time, there are two pumps per system, so that if one were not working, the other one would keep the water flowing. Here is an animation which shows an example of what some of the lights and switches do on the control panel. As before, to see it, click on the information card at the top of the screen or see the link at the end of the video. Okay. So I take it that's controlling all the plant equipment, all the yeah. pumps, all the motors. All the motors and everything like that. Those all your heats. So 
So what's this, heaters? Yeah, it must be heaters. Inlet then. Gas inlets. This blue box represents an amount of gas. Six cubic meters of gas. This is how much gas an average house uses in an hour. To compare a swimming pool boiler with an average house boiler, let's see how much gas a swimming pool boiler uses per minute. 96 cubic meters per minute. Multiply this by 60 and we have just how much gas one of these swimming pool burners uses in an hour, which we can now compare side by side with the house on the left. This old Allen Yignis boiler only has one burner. The boiler on the right now has two burners. The gas supply comes into each burner through this yellow pipe. So to compute the amount of gas three burners use in an hour, multiply 6,146 cubic meters of gas by three and you'll end up with this. The conclusion is, this place used to use a lot of gas, and we haven't even seen the heat engines yet. It uses so much that the main supply cannot provide it fast enough, so these motors boost the gas into the building. If the gas pressure is not high enough, the pressure switch on top of the gas pipe shuts down the burners. Okay, so that's two water heaters. Big green boxes. So going from heat. Part of history this is, 97 I've seen on one of these. This animation shows in better detail what's inside these green CHP heat engines and the hot water vessels. Click the information card or see the link at the end of the video. That's some obsolete kit down here. Yeah. Some main water valves. No longer in use.
Okay. You do know that I have a phobia of water tanks, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> as long as there's no like, um, oh my God. Oh, there's a float switch or something in there. Yeah. Soul levels. So how is it you've got all this knowledge about this plant? Is it just working here for so long? Or do you need that? Well we need it. We need it to a degree to know a bit of, a bit about the plant, yeah. But mainly maintenance too, we've got maintenance staff and that knows all about it. Yeah. 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 Those I mean, are your chlorine, that's where the chlorine gets added. Okay. So those monitors those, those are your monitors. So what is chlorine? Is it a liquid? No. It comes to be in fact coming a liquid form. Yeah. But how it works is that your chlorine is pumped into the pool by the by that monitor down at the end, yeah. That's uh, sort of like, like a tub. Yeah, it's a, like a pump. It's got little granules and stuff. Uh, this thing there. H, yeah. That's it. Okay. okay. And then it's monitored by here and stuff. What's going in? Yeah. So the top one's your chlorine, the bottom one is your pH. It tells you what the pH should be. Okay. Yeah. It tells you how much chlorine is in the pool. So we're at safe levels, and that's the teaching pool one. So if something were to go wrong here, you've obviously got, I mean this, is, this is quite a new bit of equipment, yeah, so I'd imagine been, that this yeah. is on a PC upstairs as well. Yeah, we've got, we've got that, and then we do manual tests. So this is a visual indication as well, what's going on. Yeah, you can pump it. You can, Take the test from there, comes out there, tells you if it stops. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, they're going continuously. Oh, I see, right. So that's the monitor, it's, it's pumping water from the pool into here all the time. Yeah, it goes through because it's monitoring how much chlorine is going into oh, yeah. the pool. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. So it sends a signal back to that to say that too much chlorine. Every time, obviously, when people are in there, it's pumping constantly. It's obviously it's trying to fight and make sure that there's enough chlorine going into the pool. So that's your, That's all it is. It's a little barrel of HST, HTH, it's called, and that's your chlorine. So that's made. That's like a delivery. Ever? How, how often is that delivered then? Um, or, or do you have a stock of it yeah, somewhere? Ah. So, those are your granules. Oh, is that it? Yeah. How long does that last then? That would last probably a day. Oh, okay. So, so this is a daily thing which you have to do, come down here and... Regular checks. I see. So they're also added to the water? They are also added to the water, yeah. The acids as well, the main pool. It's like an old pump without the motor attached. Yeah. Oh, that might be it over there. Okay, anywhere else to explore in here? Yeah. 
Yep. Okay, oh, this is. This is takes you under the pole. Okay. In the next part, we explore these underground tunnels, which bring the pipes from the swimming pools to the plant room with pumps. We also see the bottom of this ladder, which leads from the roof all the way down to the plant room. So please come back for part 2 and don't forget to see the animations, which can be selected by clicking the playlist from here, or you can click them from the video description. If you enjoyed watching, then please consider subscribing to the Mr. Matt and Mr. Che channel.